Okay, so question four uh, relates to the reaction of ethanol with cyanide ions. So these are formed from hydrogen cyanide in the presence of potassium cyanide. So for this reaction, you need to draw and name the mechanism. And the structure of ethanol is given below, so that's quite handy, at least. So the first stage of this reaction, you know that ethanol reacts with cyanide ions. So it's a good idea to draw these cyanide ions in. Okay. So it doesn't ask you, this question doesn't ask you to draw any relevant dipoles, but I would still recommend doing it as it will allow you to see where this molecule is likely to react. So as you know, oxygen is an electronegative atom compared to carbon. So there's going to be a slight pull on the electrons in the bond there. So the bond is polar, and you're going to have an electron deficient carbon atom and an electron rich oxygen atom. So this cyanide ion, negative charge, a uh, nucleophile electron pair donor, is likely to react with an electron deficient centre. So it's going to form a bond to the electron deficient carbon atom. And in doing this, it's going to break this pi bond between the carbon and the oxygen, break the double bond, and this pair of electrons are going to be delocalised onto the oxygen atom. Okay, so that's stage one of this uh, mechanism. So from here, what you've formed is that. So remember the charges on uh, each side of a reaction equation must balance. So you've now got a negative charge on this oxygen, whereas you had it on the cyanide before. And the reason the negative charge is on the oxygen is because you've got a pair of electrons from this pi bond that have now been delocalised on there. So it's now negatively charged. Okay. So in this solution, along with this intermediate, is hydrogen cyanide, so HCN. So what's going to happen here is because hydrogen cyanide has a proton available, and you've got a negatively charged oxygen here, this is going to act as a base. So it's going to accept the proton from this hydrogen cyanide and this electron pair in the bond between hydrogen and the carbon is going to uh, delocalize itself onto the carbon. It's going to be lost. So the bond is going to be broken. And so the CN will gain this uh, pair of electrons. And then from here, What we have is this molecule, and we also have a CN minus. So this is effectively a catalyst because now you know you've, you've regenerated what was originally in the reaction. Okay, so it's basically catalytic, right? So what we've got here is your product. This is known as a cyanohydrin. And the reason it's called a cyanohydrin is because it contains a cyano group, cyanide group, and an OH group, so hydrated. Yeah? So that's called a cyanohydrin. Or you may have also heard it called a hydroxy nitrile. So that's just saying the hydroxy and the nitrile. Okay, so CN group is either called a cyanide group or a nitrile group. You could hear it called uh, you could hear it be called both. Okay. So where are the marks distributed? Uh, you get one mark for this arrow here, you get one mark for this arrow here, you get one mark for both arrows here, one mark for correct intermediate structure, and then finally your final mark is for naming the mechanism. So the name of this mechanism, first of all you have a nucleophilic attack, so it's a nucleophilic reaction. And this nucleophile adds itself to the molecule. Okay, so you can see it's in the final molecule there. So it's a nucleophilic addition reaction. So it's nucleophilic addition, and for naming it as a nucleophilic addition, you'll get one mark. Okay, so there's your five marks for this uh, part of the question. So the next part of the question, the product of this reaction contains a chiral centre. So identify the centre by marking the chiral carbon in your answer with an asterisk. So to do this question, you need to understand the definition of the word chiral. So the product had this structure. So a chiral carbon is one that is attached to four different groups, okay? So as you can see, this carbon here 
is attached to one, two, three, four different groups, and therefore it should be marking that with an asterisk. So if you mark that carbon with an asterisk, you get one mark, because that's the only kind of carbon. You can see that this carbon here is not chiral because it is attached to three identical groups, so in this case it's hydrogens, and here the carbon is only attached to one other atom, so the nitrogen, so it's not chiral. Okay? Just for your reference, the cyanide group has this structure, okay? the nitrile group has that structure. Yeah? So it's a carbon atom triple bonded to a nitrogen. That's just for your reference. Okay? Okay, so the final part of the question asks, would you expect the reaction to produce a racemic mixture of products? And you have to explain your answer. So the answer is yes. Okay, so the molecule, the starting molecule, is planar. Okay, so the molecule is planar. So here's one I made earlier. This is a crude representation of ethanol, so there I haven't actually attached all of the hydrogens just to make this a bit more simple. So you can see that around this carbonyl group, so the CO, around this carbonyl group you have a planar molecule. Okay? And this means that a reaction is equally likely from both sides. So it's equally likely from the top and it's equally likely from the bottom. Okay? So a nucleophile can come in and attack from here, or it can attack from there. And because it can attack from each side, it means that you're going to form a racemic mixture of products, one where the product is here, uh, well, sorry, one where the nucleophile has attached itself there, and one where it has attached itself there. Okay? So you are going to have a racemic mixture of products form because attack on either side of this polar molecule is equally likely. So the molecule is planar, let's write this one down attack of nucleophile is equally likely from both sides so above and below the plane of the molecule And therefore, you get a racemic mixture of products. Okay? So, in terms of the marks, if you say the molecule is planar, you get one mark. And if you say that the attack of the nucleophile is equally likely from both sides, that will also get you a mark. So, this is quite a conceptually difficult question. But uh, once you study optical isomerism in a bit more detail, it will make a lot more sense. Okay? And that's question four.